Hey there guys, welcome back to another YouTube video and today I'm going to be showing you how to set up automatic atomic assemblers. Now this is going to be the same tutorial as the one in the description below because, um, well, that guy has done the tutorial first, so go and check his out. Um, but yes, I, I had a few problems with my own assemblers, so that's why I wanted to make um, a new tutorial anyway. So, um, I've got here uh, a platform and I've got a... Uh, the resources that we're going to need. So here they are. We need an atomic assembler. We need a basic export bus. We need an ME precision export bus and a precision import bus, along with the Rednet uh, programmable Rednet controller and these other things I've got in my inventory there. So the Rednet cable and then the ME system, obviously at the side too, and then whatever you want to duplicate as well. So in this case, I'm going to be doing some antimatter just because it's good. So two off the ground like this, uh, and then we're going to run them along in a row because it's just the most efficient way of doing it. Um, I'll put in the description below actually um, about the, the, the programming and stuff if you want to skip to that length of the video. Anyway, this was the problem that I encountered. Um, on the chunk boundary, if you accidentally put your assemblers and the import and export buses on the wrong side of the line, when we get around to doing that, you'll see how you could have done that differently. But if you do that on either side of the chunk boundary, um, that caused a problem. So we want to make sure that everything is inside the same chunk, all of the ME, power, not the power, the power doesn't matter, but the Rednet controller and all that needs to be inside the same chunk. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, so what we're doing is we've placed our row of, uh, of assemblers here, and then we're going to run power along the back of those, like this. There we go. And basically these atomic assemblers, they just automatically take items out and put items in and then they automatically put um, the strange matter in as well. So that's good. Anyway, so we're going to put the basic export buses along the bottom, the precision export buses along the top. And then on the front we're going to put the precision import buses. And that's very important that you put those in that order because I'm not too sure whether it works if they are in any other configuration. And now you're just going to need to connect those up using the ME cable all the way to your ME system and that should enable you to get that functioning so now let's just connect the top of that oh, missed it top of that to the rest of it there we go alright so I'm just gonna program all of these because you have to put all of these onto redstone mode with uh, active pulse all of the top ones on uh, single pulse and not stack mode and all of the middle ones the import buses on pulse mode and stack mode so uh, at the top single mode in the middle non stack mode so I skip forward there so now we can see that the middle ones are on the stack mode with the one shot pulse thing and the top ones are on single mode so now we're going to move on to the actual rednet controller bit um, we're going to run the cable out of the top of the a red net controller and you can see why I'm going to run it out the top soon and we're going to connect it like I've done there there to all of the precision buses and now you're just going to run along with your precision sledgehammer and right click the the top ones so that uh, the bits connecting to the um, to the export buses there at the top they're on orange and the ones at the bottom make sure that they're on white if they're not on white then you've probably done something wrong so break them and replace them now onto the actual program of the um, controller. This is the program on page one's nothing, page two, page three, page four, page five. And you can just, um, if, if you're familiar with it, then just pause the video here and you should be able to figure out where everything's going to go in the Rednet controller over there. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to uh, program this for you as uh, we go through the video. So this first page, uh, we need to not do anything. And then on the second page, uh, we're going to look down for a wave square timer, and W is near the bottom, so wave square timer, click on that. Constant 255, if you right click on the zero, it goes straight to 255, it's a little bit faster. And then on this one, if you left click, I think that goes to, or right click there, it goes straight to var zero. And then that's all we need to do for page two, so click forward to page three, and then all oh, one shot pulse, var zero, and vars one. There we go. 
So now if we go into the Redneck controller, we look for the One Shot Pulse. It should be down at O, One Shot Pulse, there we go. And then we're going to look for VARS 0, good. And then we're going to look for VARS 1, okay. Now on to page 4. We're going to do pass through with VARS 1 and input output up up because that's where our cables coming out of the controller and the X is there were white so so you can see the cables coming out the top of the controller there and um, I, I don't understand the uh, left and right and side side of it so I don't I don't bother with that I don't know whether it's my left my right the controllers left I'm not sure anyway so that's what we're gonna program in there so if we go over to the controller we're on page 4 we're going to scroll down till we find um, pass through there we go click on pass through and then it's vars1 and input output up on white. Yes, white. Good. Alright, so now we can move on to page 5. And this is the final page of stuff that we're actually going to have to program. There we go, page 5. And then we're going to have to go down to delay. Well, we're not actually going to have to go down because it's like that. Vars1 on the top. Constant 0 and input output up again and orange this time, there we go. And then if we hit next, we're on the last page and there is nothing on the last page. There we go. Right, so there's a few more things that we have to do to get this to work properly. What we're gonna have to do is inside of each of these export buses, we're going to need to put the item that we're going to duplicate. In this case, we're going to duplicate antimatter, antimatter milligrams, which is going to be very good because then we can make ourselves some nuclear, ex nuclear explosives. And we're going to be able to upgrade our nuclear explosives into antimatter ones. But in order for this to work, you do need a backup supply of as many as you've got um, number of assemblers. So, um, yeah, that's important. So I'm just gonna put um, an antimatter milligram in all of the precision export and import buses, and then I'll be back. Okay, so now we've got antimatter milligrams in all of the precision export buses and import buses. So the ones on the top and the ones in the middle. And you can see now that it's actually exported antimatter into the middle of each one. And the um, wave squared timer and delay and fake delay and stuff that's in there is going to maintain the fact that it will maintain one in the center of each one. After you have finished putting in the uh, item that you're going to duplicate, in the bottom you're going to need to put in strange matter. So I'm just going to skip forward to that quickly. So that's all done. There we go, strange matters in all of the bottom. And then in here, we're also going to need to have a backup reserve of strange matter so that it can fill up the um, assemblers. So I'm gonna break this cable here, fill it, fill it up with strange matter, and then we should be able to see what's going on. Right, so there we go, we've got strange matter in the ME crafting terminal, or ME, ME, ME access terminal, not crafting. And then we're just gonna connect that up using um, some ME cable again so that we can see it filling up with strange matter. So we'll just fill up with strange matter around the side and it will start to process. Now, once this has finished processing, it will go to two in the center and after it's gone to two, it will export a stack and import one at the same time. So um, yeah, that's just how it works. You can see uh, there, I've skipped forward again and it's managed to create 18 milligrams of antimatter extra than it would have done before. Um, obviously because it's imported stuff it's it doesn't show that but it has because it's run itself twice and each of these are full now inside here you can see that there's two milligrams in there and the program's now going to take one out and leave one in there like that and then that runs for all of the machines and this is very efficient because it lets you keep everything running at the same time anyway that pretty much covers it for the whole video you can expand these infinitely up down um, either way but try to keep it inside the same chunk because I think that's very important uh, of course keep make sure that you check out the um, guys video in the description because that's the original one and if you want to pause the video at this point for the um, program then please do if not I'll put links in the description for that as well anyway guys make sure you keep it in one chunk thank you for watching it's been a tennis one and goodbye